I, it is a pleasure in these difficult days to be able to be with you, presenting this talk, which is, uh, what, how can I say, uh, thinking together on something so basic as the physical property of solar systems, small bodies. Physical properties such as size, rotation, surface composition, and many other that we use in our research, we read in the papers, uh, but and they can hide so much assumption and modeling that might even invalidate the obtainable results. And I am not speaking about uh, errors, error bars, etc. That is also very important, but it's not the topic, the aspect that we'll, I will talk about. So uh, here's the title of my presentation. And... Uh, So, the physical property of minor bodies of the solar system derived from remote observation and the problem of data versus modeling. Uh, the minor bodies of the solar system, they are, uh, they are around all the solar systems, as uh, we know. They are usually separated, divided between asteroids, centaurs, TNO, Comets, comets they are all over the solar system, coming from the, the very outer part, uh, limits, external limits of the solar system and coming uh, near the sun. And then you, we have the classical reservoir of these objects, like the nebula of asteroids between Mars and Jupiter. We have the Sun Tower in the region of the giant planets. We have the TNO, which are, are in the Trans-Neptunian belt, and of course the big reservoir of the comet, which is the Oort cloud. But uh, what is the real difference among these uh, small bodies, these orbits? Their orbit, of course, their orbit are different. We, we, we define mostly them by the orbit, but their composition, their activity, and especially what is their origin, they originate altogether, separated. How can we uh, uh, understand the real difference among this body? And for this, we need the physical property. This is what. Uh, can really identify uh, the differences. And the physical property, we can uh, oops, obtain the physical property of an object, individual, uh, its shape, its size, its rotation, what is its composition, uh, surface properties, density, or internal structure. But when we do observation from the Earth, uh, these objects are very small. And uh, the individual uh, uh, properties, they, are, they have very big errors. And uh, for them to know the real uh, physical property of uh, individual small objects, the most important nowadays are the space mission. They can either flybys, orbits, or some return mission, but they really give a complete and very precise insight on individual ones. But space missions are for few objects. They are not for all the small objects. On the other hand, uh, this is from the, taken from the Minor Planet Center uh, on January the 2nd. So, According to the Minor Planet Center uh, on January 2nd, we had more than 1 million minor objects identified. Of these, nearly 5,000 are comets, and uh, 550,000 5, number asteroids, and another 500,000 a number. So we have a lot a big sample of this object. And so the properties, the collective properties of the population of this object can give us very important uh, information. We, 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 
we study their distributions, the distribution in size, in shape, in location, the distribution on composition, so the, uh, surface property, distribution of density, internal structure, when we have. In this distribution, they are the constraint used in the solar system model, uh, formation models. So, these are very important for this. And, but for this, they need to be real constraint, good constraint, uh, their physical property need to be well determined. So uh, what are some uh, physical properties? Let's, let's talk about the observable and the physical parameters. Uh, among the physical property of minor body, we can mention, for example, it's my brightness or magnitude, it's color, how the, the surface reflects the light in, the, the, in different wavelengths, what is the presence of a cometary activity, surface composition, rotational period, direction of the spin axis, prograde, retrograde. The shape it is elongated, it is rounded. What are the, the regulate structure and property, the regulate in its surface? The surface mineralogy, the albedo, this, uh, how the, the light is reflected, how much of the light is reflected and how much is, uh, is absorbed, which is the size of these bodies internal structure, ice composition, ring presence, atmosphere structure, and many others. But of this, I may say that probably just the first three, the brightness, the color, and the presence of cometary activity are observable, are directly the information that we get from the telescope, from data from the telescope. We could also have the size in the case of having many cores by uh, cores by obtained by stellar occultation, but you have to need, you need to have many of them. Just one core will not make any uh, will not give you the size. All the rest, all the remaining ones, they are physical parameters. They are derived physical parameters. So the physical property that we use. To, to, to do the, 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 the distribution and to, to constrain our models, they are based on observational data plus hypotheses or assumptions that we've made in my model. So, uh, so I will give some, uh, some example from remote observation, telescope and earth, for example, for photometry. Photometry, we uh, we can measure, we, we obtain it brightness, the flux on our CCD, for example. Of course, it depends on the wavelength we are using. So we, we derive a magnitude in a, in a filter, specific filter, whatever is the, uh, the system we are using. But uh, we must remember that minor bodies of the solar system, they just reflect the incident light. The, the, the light is not their light. So the brightness, brightness depends on diverse geometric and physical parameters. For example, depends on the distance from the, sun, from the sun and from us that we use. Of course, the distance, uh, 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 an object, will have it brightest, big, larger or smaller if it comes near us or uh, far away from us. Of course, this can be overcome if we use, for example, a fixed distance. But we have also the solar phase angle, that is the angle between the Earth, the object, and the Sun. This means the illuminated phase uh, of, the, of the object or the aspect angle. The aspect angle is the angle between the line of sight and the rotation and the in the, the, the rotation axis, and which give the which is the face we are observing at the moment. And of course, of the object, we have the shape, if it is round, it's elongated, it is round, the composition, 
uh, say the albedo, how much it is reflected, how much is absorbed. And the surface structure, it is a, a clean surface, a homogeneous surface, a regolithic surface. The regolith is, is big, is large, is small, is green sides, is boulders. So all this will, uh, uh, will, be, uh, will have direct influence on the magnitude that we derive. So uh, for small bodies, so the solar system, we, de we define a magnitude, a reduced magnitude, at one uh, unit, uh, uh, astronomical unit from Earth and from the, from the Sun in a specific phase angle as the, the observed magnitude minus log L uh, distance uh, from the Sun and the Earth. The observation, the, the observed magnitude, this the instrumental magnitude that we obtain, co obviously corrected by the atmospheric station and calibrated. And of course, the magni the, this magnitude is always referred to a filter, the filter that we are using. And I call here the X uh, filter. So if we analyze how this magnitude uh, uh, changes uh, along the time, the solar phase angle, the wavelength, we can have indication on the physical properties of, this, of the object. So, for example, let's start with the magnitude uh, time variation, what we call the light curve, this time versus magnitude. And as you see here, two images from, of course, from, uh, from uh, space mission. Here is Eros from the near uh, mission. Uh, and uh, Ceres from the down. Uh, and you see, you, you can have, if you have an elongated object, you have the magnitude that changes depending on the on the surface of of the illuminated phase, or in the case in a more round one, uh, you have you can have uh, a big uh, variation on the surface, which can show us that a complete rotation. So. If the time variation, this time variation that we observe are due only to the shape, then uh, we can fit a, a Fourier series and it will give the rotational period of the object. And if we assume that the object is a devolutional ellipsoid, the amplitude can give an indication on the shape of the object. The amplitude of the light curve will give the, the, the ratio among the two, uh, the two axes, the two larger axes. So the observable in this case is the light curve, the magnitude, the magnitude, how the magnitude varies, varies with, the, with the time. And from this, we can derive some physical parameter, which are these physical parameters. This is rotation period. If we assume that this variation is due only to the shape, and if we assume that the rotation occurs around the minimum energy axis, we can have an indication of the shape. It's much elongated, it's more rounded, just the And we can even get, if we have a very precise like curve indication on the uh, variation or bit variation on the surface. So when we plot, up, we have a plot like this. This is taken from the the light curve uh, uh, database from Werner et al. in the Minor Planet Center. Uh, here there are nearly 8,000 objects, periods. And here we have diameters versus frequency. 
we can derive, for example, this very uh, clear uh, barrier, which is called the spin barrier, which indicates that you don't have object spinning faster than, than this, this bar. And this is why, because much probably these objects are uh, rubber flies or not very uh, aglo uh, fracturated body, which if they will rotate more uh, rapidly, they will break up completely. Only the small bodies, very small in diameter, can, uh, can have very rapid rotation and uh, this rotation uh, over here, for example, but only for the small object. So you can have a physical property from this graph that is these objects are monolithic, very, very resistant. They can resist to, to very high rotation. And these objects over here, which are larger ones, they are in some way more uh, not so, not so, they don't have a very big strain at the moment. But for sure, we need to be sure of the period that you are uh, using here. Uh, for objects with cometary or non cometary activity, the light curve uh, is a little different. For example, in the case of the comets, we have, uh, uh, we know the comets come from the outer part of the solar and cooler part of the solar system. They, they increase the magnitude as they get near the, the, the perihelion, and then it, the magnitude fades again as it recedes to the outer part of the solar system. Or in the case of another object, of an object which uh, has presents uh, cometary activity, uh, you can identify uh, that uh, the object is not a, a point source like a star and you derive that you have some kind of activity, especially nowadays that many objects have been discovered, active asteroids in the, uh, in the, in the main belt of asteroids. Uh, but uh, these objects, the object and the Earth that we are here, our telescope, they are moving around the sun, they are uh, in their orbit around the sun. So the geometric com configuration, it changes as uh, with the time. Yeah? So the, the geometric configuration will lead to variate to light curve variation due to the changing of the aspect angle. The aspect angle will change with this, with the, with the orbit the changing orbit of the observer and the observed object. So in analyzing how this light curve changes uh, over long periods uh, with the geometric configuration allows to retrieve the shape and the spin direction or we call the pole uh, through a method like curve inversion. You invert the, the two-dimensional to get the third dimension. The, the most used nowadays uh, models are by, by Casaline and uh, Torpa and, and uh, et al. But this is model de dependent. It depends, the result that you obtain, the pole, the shape that you obtain, depends on the scattering law that you use. You have the possibility to use diverse scattering law. The number or in shape of the face that you can use, the shadowing percentage, and a lot of other parameters. So it's really, uh, the result that you obtain is really model dependent. Another point is that is important to say is that the poly solutions are never unique. What you usually will derive is uh, uh, the poles that is most the poles that are most reliable uh, from a, an error map that vary in the, the different parameters you can uh, infer. So, if the observable are the light curves over several months and years, the physical parameters that we can determine, uh, derive are 
the rotational period even more precisely than with just one or two nights, the shape and the spin direction. But these are model dependent and you don't have to forget it. It depends on the scattering law, use the number and shape or facet, the shadowing percentage, and a lot of other small parameters. So when we analyze a plot like this, this is a paper by Anus and et al. 2011. When you can, we have a large number of objects and we analyze the distribution of the pole, the latitude and longitude distribution. And we, we separate them between the large object, the intermediate object and the small object. We can see that uh, uh, we have differences with the size. For this, for example, the large size object, they, they have a progress excess of object. While the intermediate size, you have a kind of transition region. And for the small size, you have a pole clustering. And this is an effect uh, attributed to the YORP effect, that is an, a radiation uh, effect on this small body, which give, uh, tend to increase the rotation period and also to leave the, the rotation, the, 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 the pole, uh, the, the direction of the pole in, around the pole. Uh, we can also have variation of the magnitude with the solar phase. It's another change with type change the pole direction but we also change the solar phase and uh, this allows to the, do to define what is what uh, to to obtain what is called the absolute magnitude obviously i always speak about a specific field in a specific field which is the reduced magnitude at one uh, one uh, astronomical unit from this from the Earth and from the Sun, and a zero phase angle. Zero phase angle is here. So here we have the phase angle, and here is the Z. As you can see, you have these are the observed points. And if you plot a straight line, you will have a, a, a magnitude of six in this case, especially 6.77, but if you take in account the observed object, the observed magnitude, you will have a smaller, uh, a higher uh, magnitude around 6.50 uh, 50 or even a little more. And this is due to the what is known as the opposition effect, first identified in the Saturn rings, but uh, which is due to the scattering of the light by the surface, the surface of this object are not uh, flat, uh, uh, they are full of regolith. These are two images, recent, very recent image by the uh, Yabuza 2 and the Osiris Rex missions on the surface of Bennu and Ryugu. And we see that is this is the light reflected by this surface that we are uh, observing so changing the the way the incident light comes and is reflected by this this surface is uh, is what is giving us the, the the magnitude variations so the scattering property property they depend on the albedo on the way the incident radiations is scattered by the regular two grains the surface topography and the microstructure of the regolith grains, such as size, shape, porosity, etc. So, if we knowing how the light it is reflected or scattered, we can derive information on the surface. And we know that distinct composition lead to phase curve with different. So here, for example, this uh, uh, 
uh, a plot from the paper by Bill Sky and Shevchenko in 2000, in which they show the fit to the magnitude, to the observed magnitude. These are so the, the crosses, they are the observations. And these lines are the fit, uh, depending on which function you, you are using. So you, so the, the slope and the parameters that you get depends on the function that you are using. And of course, if you have the, the, the phase curve and you derive the G value for objects that you know the albedo, then you can have an indication of the albedo if you have the G parameters. So you can say, okay, I, I observed the uh, 30 object, as see the one by Biskaya and Shevchenko, uh, with uh, known albedo and uh, those that had al high albedo, they have a value, a G value of slope parameters of around this value. If they are the, the ones with high albedo, they had another kind of, of G parameter. So if you know the G parameter, you can not have the albedo, but at least have an indication. A bit. And since you have by this fit the absolute magnitude, which is the magnitude at zero phase angle, and if you have the albedo, you can derive the, the, the diameter. Remember that the diameter of a small a minor body, the solar system, is given by this relation where you have the albedo in the v, in the visible. And uh, here is the absolute magnitude. So the observable is the phase curve, and the physical parameters are the absolute magnitude and the slope parameter. Either way, either uh, method that you use nowadays, uh, you have the, the G, the G1, G2, the G12, but each one depends on the fit and depend on the scattering law, law, use it to derive this fitting, okay? And from this, then you can have the diameter and an indication of high or low albedo. Of course, the diameter indication of high or low albedo uh, depend on other parameters, for example, the albedo that you can derive from another way, and uh, or the previous analysis of large data set. As I said, you observe a large data set of objects which you have the albedo. You derive the, the value of G currently. Then you can use this for new objects. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the, the absolute magnitude is very important, for example, to know which is the completest limit of the data that you have. And this, uh, you know, we know that uh, the, this completeness limit uh, depends on the distance from the, from the, from the sun, because uh, we observe, we have higher, smaller object in the, for example, this is for the inner, uh, for the main belt, and you have the inner, the intermediate, and the outer main belt, and we see that the completeness limit is different. So to really assess how much of the, uh, of the population you have, you, know, you need to know which is the completeness limit of your sum. And uh, the absolute magnitude is the, the parameter that will give you this information. For the outer, outer solar system object, this is a little more difficult because the solar, the, the, you cannot observe them at, uh, at large phase angles. So you cannot have this part, the linear part of the phase curve. You just, for example, the Centauri observe until around eight uh, degree and for the T, you know, even less. So the absolute magnitude is defined 
as a linear fit of the of the observation that of the data that you have and the the, the reduced magnitude in a uh, any phase angle is given by this relation where the beta is the, the linear fit, the result of the linear fit. Uh, we can also have variation with the uh, wavelength, what we call the photometric spectrum or the color index. Uh, the photometric spectrum, of course, is always referred to a specific, uh, in this case, a specific uh, filter and refer to the colors of the sun. So you have this different uh, 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 variation of magnitude with specific, uh, at a specific wavelength. And, uh, but you can also use magnitudes in different filters to have just an indication, for example, B minus B or V minus R, and you can uh, use this kind of plot to uh, to search for correlation. For example, the physical process can be identified by correlation exactly in the color index distribution. For example, the asteroid, it was from a plot like this that Chapman and collaborators and even other uh, Worse before, they identified that the asteroid first away in the main belt from semi-major axis greater than 3 AU were systematically more blue in Johnson colors than those with uh, in more in the inner part. And it was a kind of plot like this that give the origin to the taxonomies that are so common, the C and the S, they start here with this, uh, uh, with this kind of plot. Uh, when the fluxes, the magnitudes are in the mid infrared on the thermal uh, region, then you can have the albedo. This is because the albedo is exactly how much of the uh, the light is absorbed and how much is reflected. So in the thermal, we know we will measure the thermal property of the object and we can derive the albedo. But this is not very easy. They are very highly model dependent. We have several models that are being used, that are used, the standard thermal model, the fast rotating model, NEET M for the for the near, for example. Each one of these models depends on several parameters. Most of them depend, all of them depend on the absolute magnitude H that needs to have the phase curve that we we're just talking about, a bini parameter, and so on. For example, here you have some a uh, uh, plot by their ball uh, uh, at all, uh, which the several curves we, we see here, the points are the magnitude, the observed magnitudes in the different uh, filters, and then this is the flux, and the curves are the best fit generated by fin finding the values of the diameter and a big blue that minimize this relation the flux of the observer against the model by, by, the, by the error. So uh, the observable in these cases are the magnitudes in different filters. Huh? And the physical parameters that you derive is the taxonomy when you just say as an X object has been uh, started with the magnitude in different wavelength. Uh, and uh, you have an indication of the surface composition. And of course, this indication of surface composition depends on comparison with laboratory data, data that were obtained on minerals. To say that this, the S composition is silicate, we need to, to observe silicate in laboratory and show that they are similar. In the thermal wavelength, uh, then we can have the albedo, which again is model dependent, it's dependent on a hypothesis, on assumed parameters, you need to assume, for example, the, 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 
some, some part of the meaning parameter that I showed before, and of course of the absolute magnitude. And here again, uh, it's important to mention that uh, when you have the absolute magnitude, uh, if you, the absolute magnitude is derived from a, a plot of uh, uh, varying magnitude with, uh, with uh, solar phase uh, But you don't have them for all the objects. So uh, by definition, if you don't have the the, the phase the, the phase curve you use a g of 0.15 so uh, even though you have the uh, absolute magnitude for all object uh, observed object this value this uh, can have great error because you you are not you are using a standard value for the fitting parameter for fitting. So when you look at a plot like this, that is a distribution of mass. Okay, we have mass in the main belt or the uh, up to the trojans. Uh, you use several parameters, which include a bit. Uh, densities and uh, which are assumed from uh, which are assumed as mean of each one of these classes. So you know the objects, the S, that are the X taxonomy that are silicate, they have a density of uh, around three gram per centimeter cubic. Uh, they have an albedo of around. And so, and so you derive, so this plot, this kind of plots, they, they uh, includes all the assumptions in modeling that we have done for, to derive these parameters or in the case here, where we have the diameter versus albedo for a great number, a large number of objects that is from the WISE uh, and the near WISE uh, surveys, this is from the people from Mazier et al. Here we have nearly 140,000 objects, and we have the albedo by, uh, from at least zero. One, but this albedo and this geometry are fitted, are fitted on a model, and this model has assumed parameters and uses the H, the absolute magnitude that is not all obtained by a phase curve. Uh, we can also have a spectroscopy, for example, and here is a nice plot that I've taken from Bas at, at all, and where you have the, the, the spatial dispersion of the of, of your uh, the light from the object, and this, for example, this is the is Vesta, the Aster Vesta, and this is the uh, the the, the raw counts counts of the flux of Vesta. And, and this is the light, not of Vesta, but the light of the sun reflected by Vesta. So we just have this, the surface of Vesta when we divide the, the spectrum of Vesta by those or that of a solar analog, and a, a star that has uh, spectral property similar or exactly equally to that of the sun. And so the final spectra, it depends on the solar analog. So if we don't use a very uh, similar 
está a sola nanado star that is analog to the sun to our sun we will have error that can of course they are small error but it's an error that we are introducing here in the spec that we are analyzing uh, the identification composition depends on the comparison of the spectra that we obtain in a telescope with laboratory spectra so of meteorites and of minerals so we compare uh, this uh, the, the spectra obtained we can even go further and uh, perform some parametrization and study how these parameters they uh, they change with the composition in laboratory so is model dependent it based also on the assumption that the matter meteorites that we have in, in, in the laboratory, they represent all the compositions that are in the main belt, for example, or among the, the minor bodies. So if you have a composition of the, out there that you don't have here, a meteorite, you will not have a, 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 a match, let's say. And from this parameterization with laboratory comparison, comparison with uh, with uh, minerals you can derive some uh, form to uh, identify the composition the mineral mineralogy of an object just knowing for example this uh, paper classical paper by Gaffey and collaborators 93 where you can find they analyze the the ordinary contract and derive these parameters, for example, band area against band one center, and they define that this region is the region where there are the ordinary contrite, and the composition, the mineral composition of this object is olivine plus orthopyroxene. So if now you observe an object, you, you observe, you derive the band area, the band center one, and you say that the values are hidden inside this, this region, then you can derive the composition. Of course, this is model independent. Again, in the case of basaltic object, you can have band center against band center one, and you can go from orthopyroxene uh, with uh, uh, orthopyroxine or clinopyroxine. Uh, but we know from laboratory study that distinct condition of pressure and temperature and other property produce distinct minerals from a same composition, from the same magma. When you uh, uh, when the magma uh, is cooling. So, if we identify the 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 mineral that are present in a in a in a in a in a surface, we can set constraint on the formation condition and the initial chemical composition. For example, here is an an, an example where you have temperature and pressure, and you have mineral which have a same composition of aluminium, silicium, and oxygen. But depending on the pressure and, and temperature, they have completely different mineralogies. But on the contrary, if we, we identify the presence of, for example, this mineral, we know that it has been uh, uh, produced in an, in, a, in an environment which was a temperature between zero and 700 Celsius and low pressure. Okay, so you can set uh, information. So the observable is the spectra in the visible, it can be in the near infrared, the mid infrared, any, 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 any region you want, or each object is, is different, but you can derive as physical parameters, surface mineralogy, and, and even indication on the formation condition. Of course, it depends on the comparison with laboratory data. For example, a recent paper by uh, 
this this thing they uh, use it in the in the models of solar system formation they analyze what is called the carbonate con the carbonaceous chondrite and non carbonaceous in, in chondrite and they derive that they must have formed in different region of the solar uh, disk and the formation. For that, you need to have uh, a clear indication, a clear uh, knowledge of the composition. So many other observations in different wavelengths with other with different instruments, instrument, instrumentation are there, it's polarimetry, radar, star occultation, other. So different physical properties are derived, but you, each one depends on modeling, on hypothesis and assumption that are need to be taken in account in order to correctly interpret the distribution. Last but not least, as I said, this is the number of nearly number of numbered small bodies. Well, about the size of this object, we need absolute magnitude and we need the albedo. The absolute magnitude we have for all the known objects, 10% of them, but using the g equal 0.15. This is, this can be correct or not. So, this is 100%, but it's 100% with an error. And the albedo, here we have the whites, uh, the whites that I spoke before, that you have a large number of objects, but they are just 25% of the, of the known object, of the number of the small volume. Of course, here there are some un, unnumbered, but it's okay. Composition. The colors, we have this law and digital survey, which had, which has given us the, 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 the colors for a large number of objects. But this large number, it accounts for not nearly 20% of all the population, non population. The spectrum, even considering this la the large, that, uh, the large uh, surveys, we have five thousand objects even if this if you double it you don't have more than one two percent of the of the of the object mineralogy not even one thousand objects it's less than point point two percent and the rotational property the period we have for the the, the like of database of the order of twenty thousand objects it represent four percent of all the, the object. So, and the speed direction is even less. Is very, so, uh, it's not the only that uh, we have. We have uh, parameters, uh, physical properties uh, that are derived based on assumption or modeling that must be taken with care. We also have a very limited number of physical property for the all known population. So distribution of the minor body's physical properties are fundamental to derive correct solar system formation and evolution models. But we need physical properties which really represent the body, or at least we need to know exactly which are the hypotheses and the modeling used to derive them so to be uh, real. So this is what I would like to, to show you and thank you very much for your attention.